Welcome, everybody. Metabolism 3.2. We are on a little field trip today. We've come to Mr. Wiggins' classroom. Um, I've got a nice bright window behind me for backlight uh, because that's always good for video. A um, lot of stuff going on in here. Not really, uh, but there is today. So one of the things, why, why are we here today? We're going to observe a, uh, a demonstration where I'm going to be mixing some chemicals together. Um, and you're going to experience it vicariously through me. Um, you're going to still be able to make some observations and uh, hopefully draw some conclusions from it. Hey, before we do anything, though, let's take a look at this warm up. As we always do, I'm going to go ahead and jump into Amplify, actually. Uh, here we go. Uh, it's a, a, a scenario question. If a patient has a medical condition that causes his cells to absorb fewer than normal somethings, uh, molecules, this patient would likely feel very tired. Look at those um, answers. And you might think, well, it could be this one or it could be this one. I mean, Choose the best one. Which one you think makes the most sense? Which would be the best answer? Don't forget to explain your reasoning, please. That's always the most important part. And then uh, once you do that, come on back to me. All righty. So what did you say? I know what I said. I said glucose. Yes, glucose. Uh, or, or oxygen. Glucose wasn't even an option, was it? Um, although you could have chosen glucose. Some of you may have put starch because you know that uh, starch breaks down into glucose and you know that, well, a cell needs glucose in order to make energy. However, does a cell absorb starch? No, it absorbs that glucose. So that starch gets broken down. So just the wording of the uh, question is important to pay attention to because that sort of leads you to the answer. Uh, so the answer would be oxygen uh, for that uh, because oxygen is one of those molecules that is absorbed by the cell and it's involved in the production of energy. Uh, some people may have said, well, what about protein? Can't you make energy from protein? Well, we're not talking about that just yet. We are focused on glucose and oxygen. So let's go back to um, observing a chemical reaction. Let's talk about this thing called energy. Energy is the ability to make things move or change. Uh, you use energy when you need to move yourself, right? Um, your cells are producing energy all the time because there's all sorts of things going on inside of your body uh, that require energy that you don't even realize are happening and going on. But your cells are constantly doing that. So energy, the ability to make things move or change. Here is our investigation question for today. Uh, how do oxygen and glucose molecules release energy in the cells? We identified oxygen and glucose as the molecules that we need for this uh, uh, chemical reaction to release energy. But how do they actually do it? So we're going to try to focus on that today, and we're going to have a little demonstration that uh, maybe helps us understand. Hey, look at this. Uh, lab safety guidelines. <laughs> um, you're not here. And you're not doing this. But hey, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and go over these. Um, first, follow instructions. Always, always, always. That goes for lab safety uh, and for just life in general, right? Follow instructions. Don't taste things. Never taste something in a lab unless you are instructed specifically to do so. It is dangerous. You don't necessarily know what you're tasting. You don't necessarily know where the equipment has been or what has been in it before. If there's any residual uh, stuff on it that could harm you. Always smell uh, substances like a chemist. What do we mean by that? You don't just like, you know, uh, put your nose right up into it and uh, sniff as hard as you can. Uh, it's, you know, some of you are familiar with this idea of wafting. You bring the scent to your nose, not put your nose like in, you know, go for a swim and whatever it is. Um, protecting your eyes. I have my eye protection right here. Uh, protecting your hands, it's a good idea. Um, sometimes you're going to want to make sure you wear gloves. Sometimes what you're using doesn't require the use of gloves, uh, but always make sure you know. Uh, keep your hands away from your face. Again, if you get something on your hands, you don't want to be touching your face. And hey, in these times, we all know that. Don't touch your face. Um, tell your teacher if you have allergies. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, always, you know, if you have allergies to anything, uh, your teacher should know uh, if what you are using and what you are handling in the lab that day is going to affect you at all. Be calm and careful. Uh, sometimes labs can get exciting. Sometimes, you know, you're doing some cool stuff, a reaction happens, and uh, it's surprising. Uh, but make sure you stay calm, because what happens when you get too excited, boom, you knock something over, 
uh, you light someone on fire, you never know what's going to happen. Um, report all spills, accidents, and injuries to your teacher immediately, immediately, immediately. Your teacher should, should uh, not yell at you or get mad at you. Um, uh, you know, we, we, we want to know, we just need to know if something got spilled because we need to clean it up and we need to make sure like if there's glass that's broken, we get that taken care of right away. Uh, don't try to do it yourself. Inform your teacher first. Always inform your teacher first. Uh, avoid anything that could cause a burn, right? Um, next one. Hey, sometimes, uh, uh, if you're heating up like uh, glassware, um, like a beaker, a glass beaker. Uh, glass, when it's hot, it looks the same exact way that it looks when it's cold. Um, and so it, you might just reach and go grab for something and it's crazy hot because it's been over a, a flame or on a, a hot plate or something. Um, always avoid something that could cause a burn. Wash your hands after class. Always make sure you wash your hands after a lab because uh, you never know what maybe got on them or didn't get on them. All right, moving forward. We're investigating these substances you see right there. Uh, we have phenol red. We have uh, calcium chloride uh, here, right here. Calcium chloride. We have baking soda. There's our, our phenol red. Um, and what we are going to do is we're going to mix them all up. So here's our procedures right here. Measure 10 milliliters of phenol red solution from the squeeze bottle into the graduated cylinder. Hey, I'm going to do that with you right now. Let me don my safety glasses. Here's my graduated cylinder. Let's get 10 millimeters of phenol red in there. All right, I have exactly 10 milliliters of phenol red in my graduated cylinder. I know because it went up to the 10 milliliter line and I have my graduated cylinder on a flat surface and I'm measuring it at eye level. Great, awesome, awesome. Carefully open the bag with the powders and pour the phenol red solution into the bag. Here's my powders, I pre-measured them. I have a tablespoon of calcium chloride. I have a teaspoon of baking soda that I've measured and put into this bag. Ooh, seal, pour, so pour it in, seal the bag and mix it, push the air out of the bag, all right. Here we go. Are you ready? Are you ready for it? Oh, there you go. Uh, okay, seal the bag. Push the air out of the bag. Seal it. All right. And then gently massage the outside of the bag to mix the substances. Whoa. What do you notice right away? Right away, we see something going on here. Make some observations there. Mr. Reagan, that looks more like a vigorous massage, not not a gentle. Uh, I know, I know, that's okay. We're gonna be all right. Oop. One thing that I noticed about this bag is it is it got really cold. It felt cold to the touch um, after a little while. We noticed that it's definitely changed color too. Uh, that phenol red was a nice red color. Uh, the baking soda and the sodium uh, 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 calcium chloride, sorry, uh, those were um, white white powdery color. So now we have this new yellow color that uh, that's going on here. You notice the bag is full of uh, some sort of gas uh, that was produced by this reaction. Um, hey, I did something else too. I took some of this calcium chloride, I put it in the bag, and I put some water in it, and it got really, really hot, almost too hot to touch. So when I put this in a bag and put water on it, it got really hot. When I put this and the baking soda in the bag with the phenol red, it got really cold. There's all sorts of things that are going on here. Um, what we're supposed to really understand and what we're supposed to really notice is that these chemicals are changing. They're not the same substances that we started with. Um, and what we see here, the substances in the bag are now carbon dioxide. That is the gas that uh, is being produced here. Chalk, salt, phenol red, and water. This is a chemical reaction. When you get a completely new substance or substances uh, than you started with, uh, was there evidence during this chemical reaction that suggests energy was released? Well, certainly when I put the calcium chloride in the water and it got hot to the touch, like I could barely even hold that bag anymore, that is a big release of energy. So, 
we are going to try to tie this to what's going on inside of our cells with cellular respiration. First thing you're going to do is you're going to do a reading. Uh, you are going to go into Amplify. Uh, what part? What part? What part? It is activity. Oh, oh, oh. I'm all the way down at the bottom there. Activity three. There's an article for you to read, a uh, quick article about cellular respiration. Uh, I want you to annotate the article. Uh, so a little intro to the article. We combine substances to observe a chemical reaction. Something like this happens inside the cells of the body with glucose and oxygen. Again, we're trying to connect what we just saw to what is going on in our cells. So please read that article, annotate it, and then come back to me. Next, we are going to observe cellular respiration in the simulation. So, the chemical reaction in the plasma bag was a helpful model for understanding what happens when energy is released inside of the trillions of cells in our body. And now we're going to try to make some careful observations um, as we watch it happening in the simulation. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what's going on um, in Amplify and how to do this activity. So we want to go to Healthy Body. I'm going to reload this for us. We want to go to Observe. All right. And uh, it told us to go ahead and feed our body anything we want. I'm going to go ahead and feed it a sandwich because I like sandwiches. Uh, we want to zoom in on the cell to see what is going on. And it said go ahead and click to half speed. And it wants us to watch what happens with the glucose and the oxygen. Um, do we notice any signs of energy being released uh, during this process? Um, let me give you a hint. Down here is where you're going to look for energy being released. Um, also, another thing it wants you to do is take screenshots before and after. Um, that reaction happens. So um, again, if you have trouble with screenshots and knowing how to do that, make sure you Google that for your device that you're using. You can upload them to the Amplify site. Go ahead and do that and come back to me. Let's talk about some of these questions. First, where did the chemical reaction take place? If you notice uh, in the simulation, the chemical reaction, it seems like it's happening in these little squiggly sausage looking things. These are actually called the mitochondria. Um, they are an organelle in your cells. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, the next question. What evidence did you see that energy was being released during cellular respiration? Well, we should have seen our cellular respiration uh, gauge here uh, going up and down. And what that shows us is that the cells are creating energy um, or releasing energy, I should say. Um, whenever you see that uh, dial moving, and moving up, the cells are releasing energy because of that process. What new substances were produced in the chemical reaction? Uh, if you were observing carefully, you would have noticed that when the glucose and oxygen can go into the cell, and we've talked about this before, that's not what comes out of the cell. What comes out of the cell is carbon dioxide and water. So just like when we mixed our calcium chloride, our phenol red, and our baking soda together, we got new substances the same type of thing is going on in your cells, in the mitochondria. Oxygen and glucose are going in, but that's not what's coming out. Carbon dioxide and water are coming out. And during that process, energy is released. Here is a uh, model of what is going on. We see glucose and oxygen coming together, and they are producing water molecules, carbon dioxide molecules, and energy. Uh, Mr. Wigan. Uh, is energy a molecule? Uh, no, but it's stored in one called ATP, and we'll talk about that more later. Hey, this is part of activity five. I don't believe there's anything for you to actually answer in Amplify, but uh, our investigation question again, we're reviewing it. We're going back to it, revisiting it. How do oxygen and glucose molecules release energy in the cells? Um, I want you to think about how would you answer this question. Uh, I'm definitely going to be asking you this when we see each other again in class. And that brings us to our key concept number nine, inside the cells. The atoms that make up glucose and oxygen can be rearranged to make different molecules. This chemical reaction is called cellular respiration, and it releases energy. The rearranging of the oxygen and the glucose molecules to make carbon dioxide and water releases energy. That is what our cells are doing. That is what is happening. And that is how we are getting energy. So if you don't have the glucose, you're not going to be able to make that happen. If you don't have the oxygen, you're not going to be able to make that happen. We're not going to be able to release that energy. 
let's move on to the homework. For the homework, uh, you are going to watch a little video about uh, a scientist that first studied cellular respiration, and then you're gonna answer a question based on what you've learned. The video is attached to our uh, lesson in Google Classroom, so you can find it there. And then, hey, after that, yay, end of lesson. We will see you next time.